for this chat. Uh, a couple of fine gentlemen joining us today for a conversation about a very Chicago collaboration, um, which is incredibly exciting. Uh, for those of you who have been following along, um, we've been hosting these virtual events since mid-March, a couple of weeks, sometimes three per week. So there's a lot to talk about when you're talking about alcohol. Um, and fortunate that we have great partners and supporters uh, like Tremaine and CH and Josh Revolution. Josh is actually on the National Advisory Board as well. Um, so uh, this should be a fun talk. Um, a little bit of other business. Uh, we're going to mute everybody in just a minute or so. And feel free to use that chat room, um, the virtual chat room, uh, to share what you're drinking. Um, share anything. Uh, it really is meant to be sort of like our little uh, tap room, if you will. One another, ask questions. Josh, you good? I'm on the lake. It's great down here in Indiana. Um, it's not raining yet. Good, good, good start to Memorial Day. Thank you. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Well, I do hope everyone has uh, their bottle of anti war Again, the most Chicago collaboration uh, I've seen yet. Um, we'll talk about this in a minute. But first, um, I, you know, I always have to assume that um, some people might not know a little bit of background about some of these uh, organizations or breweries or distilleries or various um, folks that we work with. So Josh, uh, let me ask you this. Can you please tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Um, I don't think people know that you were not always in beer. Um, and then a little bit about how revolution. Sure. So um, my name is Josh Deep. Getting off the beach here in Indiana, where I'm hanging these days, hiding out. Set personal records for not being in Chicago for length of times. And um, I'm the chairman of the party at Revolution. Revolution Brewery has been open about 10 years. We got a brew pub, we got a big brewery, we make a lot of beer, craft brewer. And um, I can tell my life story, but I'm going to keep it short right there. And I'm excited to drink an anti hero. I'm currently in public space where drinking is not legal, so I'm going to pause and I will legally drink shortly. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I. I... I got to know Josh a few years ago, um, and uh, he actually, he's a very modest guy. He has a great story. He was originally a nonprofit. It took him a long, long time to actually get Revolution going. So uh, whenever you, whenever I drink Revolution, I know. Yeah, we were like, 10 years ago we opened, but like, we started it like 20 years ago. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, man, that's, that's the a labor of love right there. So that's what I think about when I think of revolution. Yeah, and I wish I got to hang out at the Old Town Ale House as much as I do. <laughs> I do hang out at the Old Town Ale House a lot. Um, all right, let's switch gears over to Booz and me. You can uh, also do the same. Tell us a little bit about yourself and about CH and really how you came to acquire Malort. Yeah, well, um, hi everyone. I'm just, I'm just happy to be here drinking a beer. I still haven't figured out how to like properly show a product. I don't know if that's working. <laughs> Revolution beer makes me happy. That's all I know. Well, I'm sorry. What was the question? <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about uh, CA, how that all happened and how really you came to acquire Malort. <laughs> sorry, Liz. Um, <laughs> that's, I think uh, this one was going to be a little bit of goofy. <laughs> it really has to be. I, um, well, let's see, I, I, have, I have kind of a long history, too, because I started a brewery um, um, like 20, no, my gosh, 30, 35 years ago or something that never went anywhere called North Beach Brewing in San Francisco. And then I, then I kind of like had to go on pause other than home brewing for like 25 years or something. And, um, and then I, I started CH, so about uh, eight years ago. And um, so we, we've always been known for our flagship vodka. Um, you know, we do, we make grain to bottle vodka from Illinois grain, actually Kane County grain, super hyper local. Um, and um, and I've, I've always just been a brewer at, at heart, but a, and a drinker at my core. So um, I figured, you know, I could probably figure out how to distill. And um, 
So, so we started CH in the West Loop, and now we have um, a bigger distillery in Pilsen. But so like a lot of you, uh, I'm not from Chicago. I moved here 20 something years ago, um, but I immediately fell in, in love, in love with Malort and um, became a fan. And then when I started the, the company, I, um, I actually didn't realize that Malort was being made in Florida. You know, it's such a Chicago thing. I never really thought about it. And so when I found that out, I um, made buddies with uh, Sam Mackling, who is the director of marketing for, uh, for Malort and um, started bugging him. And we together started bugging the owner, Pat Gablick, um, who was just the, the third owner, you know, in the history of the brand going all the way back to the 1930s that uh, she should bring it home to Chicago and let CH make it. And I kept bugging her for five years and she kept saying, no, no. Um, and, but she was really sweet and, uh, and just a wonderful lady. And um, so I um, gave up and that's, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that was it until Sam called me a couple months after I gave up and he said, she'd like to, you know, actually retire. And she kind of wants you to buy the company from her. So that's how it came about. And I, 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 honestly, I mean, I, I still remember the feeling I had that day. It, it's, it's like winning the lottery, but culturally winning the Chicago cultural lottery. I don't know what the hell that means. Well, you know what, but, though, you know what, though, Tremaine, I feel like all Chicagoans felt that way. You know, and that's why I felt that way. Cause I was like, well, Lord's going to come yeah. home. This is awesome. And then it was yeah. like, Oh no, we have to figure out how to like not screw right. it up. Right. So, um, yeah, but it's, it's been an amazing ride. It's so fun. I, I, I say this every time. I really feel like we do not own the brand. Um, people who love Malort do, and I, there are very few brands of anything that, that have the privilege of saying that. And so we just sort of get the responsibility and the right. fun of getting, getting to carry it forward. And let me just tell a quick question about, our, <laughs> see, thank you, Josh, for making an excellent beer. <laughs> Um, sorry for being a goofball. I was born that way. But um, so the, I didn't meet Josh until maybe a couple, maybe a year or two after we started. I forget exactly. But my first real contact with um, Revolution Brewing was we had uh, a private party in the back of our distillery and we got a keg of anti here. And I showed up the next morning, you know, early to get started. And I looked at the keg and I was like, oh, there's a little left. So I poured myself a breakfast beer. And then I wrote this love letter just to like info at revbrewing.com and just, you know, like gushed about how much I love their beer and everything they were doing. <laughs> you know, I was like half in the bag at 930 in the morning on, on Antihero. And it, it just felt so good. And I was like, well, you know, great. And then somebody wrote me back and it was so sweet. So um, I've always just had a wonderful scare them? feeling. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, I guess it wasn't too creepy because they, they wrote me back. <laughs> well, that's good. That's that's definitely a revolution. Um, all right. Uh, I think I remember. I think I remember getting that email. Okay. And I know we I remember we had we had beers at the bar. Yeah. Right. We had beers at the brew pub, and maybe some cocktails. Yeah. I think we had both. Um, and uh, I think it was just because you emailed. Josh, I was talking you, for like how it was we got together. I think it was because you emailed, and then it was great. We hadn't talked in a little while, and I shot you an email about this. Uh, 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 we had all these kegs of beer, right? Wait, what Josh, was were you the one who replied to his email? Um, I used to get info at revbrew.com. I currently don't get it directly. Well, I, I yeah, get, uh, that was back in the day. People who do that, a few yeah. different people in the comms department, and they're awesome. Right. And um, like Rob, okay. Heavy Metal Rob gets the emails right now. Go to okay. email info at revbrew.com and say, what's up to Heavy Metal Rob? He is, you know, back off furlough, an essential worker working at Revolution. Nice. Um, actually, since people are, are definitely familiar with the Lord, of course, and they're familiar with Antihero, but they know a little bit less about Antihero, that was really your first beer. Right? Um, it wasn't like the first, first beer, it was first IPA. And, um, even like early on, we wanted to brew. Maybe it was like beer number five or six, something like that. Uh, we did like Bottom of Wit, Eugene Porter, and Cross of Gold first, and Iron Fist. And we did, I think we did Coup de Top. And then we did Anti Hero at the brew pub. And it was the first IPA. And we were like, let's do it. We like, let's rotate and do different IPAs. And then everyone was like, I really like Anti Hero. Let's make, can you make that again? 
So they're like, okay, we'll make some more of that. So we made other IPAs and um, I made it to the car. It's been a grueling three hours. So I out online to my great wife, Krista here, who is my savior. And uh, hey, Tony and the Mason family. family. <laughs> yeah. Turn the music down, but there you go. It's Memorial Day family weekend. I think it's cool that we're doing this on Saturday afternoon of Memorial Day. Um, well, the, well, the, the, the anti-hero Malord just got released yesterday, which is why we're doing it today so that you guys can get the inside skinny uh, as it's hot off the presses. Um, so wait, Josh, is, uh, anti-hero still like a bestseller? Yeah, it is. It's still the bestseller. Yeah. Out of everything that you guys made. And it has today. been since, uh, since, uh, like, since, since the first, like, a couple weeks of the pub, it always has been. Yeah. So definitely uh, bottom up wit bottom up wit sold really well at the brew pub for a while. Cross the gold and bottom up wit were the best sellers at the brew pub. And here it was always the best selling IPA. And when we went into cans, especially in kegs, it became the number one beer. Yeah, um, it's definitely um, very uh, a beloved uh, beer, not just in Chicago but in other places and other states where you can get um, Revolution. Um, so it's actually, I think, incredibly fitting that this collaboration includes Antihero, which is the best-selling beer at Revolution, and Malort. Um, it, it just sort of makes sense. After, I, after, after you guys told me about it, it made a lot of sense. But how, so how did all this come to be? Like, what, what made this collaboration happen? So, uh, like, again, like Tremaine talked about, like, we had beers, but then we hadn't like, seen each other and talked to each other for a, a couple years, I think. Right, Tremaine? Yeah. Okay, and um, obviously, like beer and whiskey have this natural connection, right? And um, so, like, you you got your whole COVID nineteen. We're just like, okay, there we go. We'll fast forward to the first few weeks. We just kind of stopped producing beers in kegs. I was just, you know, it was just clear that uh, the bars were all closing. We had to close our brew pub. We had to close our tap room, and so. You kind of pause like that. We just switch to all cans. What we do as a brewery, a key difference we have between a brewery and a distillery is like this, like freshness of the base product. Uh, freshness for us is a matter of like days and weeks, right? And in a distillery, it's what do you say, weeks and years or months and years? Yeah, it, it can be it can be forever if it has to be, but you know, hopefully, yeah. it gets drunk before then. And um, and so like a beer in a keg for us is part of like the fresh beer supply system. Draft beer, in my mind, my, and I have an opinion like everyone else, but draft beer is as good as it gets. I like a nice firkin as well, but um, a cold draft beer or a room temperature draft beer, it's soft and um, it can be served very nicely and freshly and you can really get all the best, maximize the aromas and taste and flavors of the beer and the, the beer drinking experience. What I miss in my heart so much right now with the bars closed and um so uh we were like right away we think about we have worked with distilleries in the past we sent beer to cold all in the past. I think, I don't know if we've sent beer to anybody else, but we'll back and we'll just move it along as like the kegs we have at Revolution that never even went out to distributors. And then can we distill that? And that was like the starting email. And okay, so e from, an email exchange happens. And you guys say, email. yeah. It's my favorite method. <laughs> Phone calls, also maybe some texts, but not a lot of like newfangled, uh, you know, social media. Yeah, pe people. Go for it. People sometimes don't like to pick up the phone anymore to actually make a call. Um, uh, 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 okay, so email happens. You guys have 160 barrels of anti-hero that you got to do something with. Email to yeah. you guys communicate what happens next. 
trip well, back. Why, why doesn't Jermaine pick it up from here? Yeah, he got, he, 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 I sent the first email, so he had to respond. <laughs> yeah, and then the, I love the the, uh, the subject line of the email was free beer, exclamation <laughs> point. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, 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 I opened that one. Um, yeah, so, we, yeah, we got on the phone and um, just started, you know, talking. And I mean, of course, like I like most people in the industry, I hate wasting alcohol. So, um, so yeah, okay, let's distill it. I distilled a couple of other beers before, um, let's see, uh, Burnt City um, beer that we did. We actually distilled it into a gin and um, I done with um, one with, uh, Gosh, I always forget the name, but um, but anyway. So that but the tricky part is is the hops part. It's, you know, I mean, right. I, basically you're distilling a grain mash, and that's what we do anyway. So that's that's kind of easy, but the hops can be tricky. So, but I hadn't yet distilled a beer at our Pilsen distillery, which has this really awesome um, artisan forty plate, fifty foot tall column still uh, that we make vodka on, and um, I was really curious to see how how it would go with that. So yeah, so the you know semi truck showed up with 160 half barrels of of, uh, of beer, and um, we started loading it into the still. So Josh came over with um, Jordan, uh, his packaging manager, and um, we you know kind of like hooked up this rig to get all the beer into the still. That was the first part. Um, yeah, that's and, a task um, in and of itself. You guys were you know you guys didn't have like a keg coupler at the facility. <laughs> you guys need to get a draft beer system. You know, yeah, I know. Like, uh, Millard goes best, I think, with a, it's okay with a bottle. I'm not against bottled beer. A cold bottle, old style, like very cold in a glass bottle is very acceptable to me. But I do think like uh, the shape of the shot and the shape of a, a draft beer pint, the ubiquitous pint, have like commonality there. Right? Yeah. They're just like slurping liquids. They're both good for just like grand slurping of liquids. <laughs> Cans are cool. I mean, I'm okay with cans, but. <laughs> um, take right. I'll take it anyway. I got it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, all right, you get you get the beer and you start thinking about recipes together, or like, what do you sort of? No, it was more about? like it was more like throw it through the still and try a few methods, see what you get. And Tremaine, I learned so much about distilling. I have uh, drank a lot of distillates in life. I've visited distilleries. Revolution does not have a still, right? And so we don't do any distilling, you know, and fortification of alcohol. So, uh, that'd be nice someday, but not yet. And um, so, and then so we got the, you know, you get the end product. Also like through the still process, there's things that you follow. You can actually like smell in the environment, like in the distillery there in Pilsen, which is on the old site of the old Schoenhofen brewery plant. You know, we have to, you know, we have to go there and I don't mind going there early, but uh -oh. The story is, is that 18th and Canal Port, I think it's the best preserved beer history site in Chicago land, let's just say, right? And yeah, um, it's really the only one left. Milwaukee has nice sites, I hear. Yeah. But at Chicago land, it's the number one by far. Um, and CH, I believe, owns one of the old buildings and built a new building, right? Yeah. And there's an old artisanal well there. But, um, the Schoenhofen, the Peter Schoenhofen Brewery, it's just a great, it's on the National Trust for Historic Places. You can see the, the Brewer's Star, the Six-Pointed Brewer's Star in like the power building on 18th Street next to the administration building there in the corner with the big turret. And they used to bottle water there and it's been offices since then. And, and it's just was a great an example of like what a brewery was. Yeah. Um, before, like, the, the what's the time frame of that, Liz? Like, 18... That's, uh, that's the late 1890s is when uh, Hoffman was around and into really survived uh, up until the mid-20th century. Um, but in, in the buildings of, are still... A lot right of bricks. Yeah, a lot actually, of bricks. Uh, huh? the, the buildings these, days, these days, we would build a new brewery like the, the CH Distillery out of concrete, tall ceilings. And this gets us back to the process. Uh, which is the big skill, which is like 40 plates. How's, what's your ceiling height there, Tremaine, with the distillery? It's like, like 50 feet. 50 feet, super tall, but one space. Whereas the, all the other buildings at the Schoenhofen are like 10 foot per floor. Yeah. You know, that's how they did it back in the day. And so in that big airspace, you can smell 
the essential oils coming out of the still. Tremaine's still is open to the environment. It's an artisan still. I learned about this and I'm sharing the knowledge I got from him, but it's like at, we got early on a nice smell of banana bread with the methanol that you're not supposed to drink. Mm -hmm. We didn't drink it. We just kind of rubbed it and smelled it. it made, and, um, and then eventually the good parts of the distillate came out. And I think we described it as like um, having a nice, clean, sweet character. That, that so, was the first cut, right? That was the sweet. Yeah. So when did you when did you take those barrels over? When was that? That was like um, Six the weeks third, ago, week, third week of April. I think okay. it was the twenty first. We a month ago. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, just a month ago. And do you guys choose anti-hero <laughs> to give up, or did you, you repeat that? Can you repeat that? Yeah, did you guys choose Antihero as the beer that you were going to send over to make? So it's it like it's what we had the most of. It's what we had the most of in the cooler. Yeah. And uh, so again, we started with beer that wasn't even out of the code yet. This is just beer that we had produced that never even left on a truck to a distributor. Eggs, right? They're good. They had them. They already had enough. And um, used was Cardeco, which is 90 days. This is my cat, Rusty. What's up, Rusty? <laughs> um, back home now from the hike. Nice. So uh, the beer, 90 days from March 9th. Let's use the rough 30 days to a month kind of math. And we're at like June 9th. So the beer would technically not even be out of code today. That's important because. Again, freshness is so important. It's like, so next week, some suburban bars might have beer gardens open, right? Or I'm in Indiana or, or Wisconsin, they, uh, Michigan, not Michigan, but Indiana, Wisconsin, Ohio, where we sell beer. You can open up a bar in a limited fashion. So we're just gonna sell, we filled some kegs this week and we'll fill more next week. Nice. We have it. We just began keg filling uh, in the last week or so. So okay. sell fresh beer. And then this beer was like, truckloads that we keep at any time at the brewery to kind of give people an idea of the size and scale of Revolution. Uh, then we have the, the canned beer and the keg beer. The canned beer is like two-thirds of what we make and the keg beer is around a third. That's who we are today and um, it varies depending on your brewery. And uh, there we go. And so we started with that and right so we do we, we do one truckload or two truckloads or we did two batches out of one truckload is what we did. About eight yeah, pegs, so it, eight pegs per batch. It, yeah, Tremaine, can you talk a little bit about, you know, when you made it and, and sort of if you were going for a certain flavor profile or if you were sort of just like, let's see what happens. I think, I think I'm back. Sorry. It yeah, it took about um, so our our main still is um, 40, 4,800 liters. So that's basically eight eighty half barrels, 40, 40 barrels of beer. Um, to fill that so um, and you know we're, we're what normally what goes into that still is would be a what, what we would call a stripping run but it's it's a much higher ABV thing so I, I hadn't run is, anything. Is my, is my wife Krista? Everybody's my wife Krista? Hello. Uh, oh there it is. Yeah. Nice job. We got, the, we got original. I got some bourbon here too. <laughs> <laughs> we should just do this for the next half an hour. Neat. We're gonna have it neat. Neat. Neat pour. By the way, um, I'm curious, and, and for everyone on here, um, you have it. Let me know in the chat if you actually picked some up and Ooh. have tried it. Um, all right, Tremaine, all right. back to story on, on making it. So yeah, we so we loaded up anyway. So the um, you know in distilling, there's heads, hearts, and tails. Hearts are the good stuff that you want. Heads are the, the methanol and lighter alcohols. And um, one of the, the nice things about having a, a, um, a, a 40 plate column is that, uh, okay. is you, that you can you. really take off the head. So um, that worked really well. There was just enough alcohol basically to fill the column, which meant that we could get all the way to the top, which means we got what we would call a really good heads cut. And so I was talking with, you know, when the stuff was coming out, the initial part, that's the heads, 
um, I said to Josh, I said, I said, oh, good. It's really awful. And he was like, what? I said, yeah, the, the, the worse that the heads are, the better, because that means you're getting, you know, the crappy stuff out. So, um, and then what we got in, in our hearts um, part of the run was very um, kind of sweet and uh, just really nice, just very like drinkable, like right off the still. And, um, but we weren't really getting a whole lot of hops. So we- uh, I'm gonna so join back on my computer in a second. Okay. Coming back on the PC. Okay. Cool. Um, so uh, we, weren't, we weren't really getting any hops in, when we were running it on the column. So, um, so we stopped about, uh, half, about halfway through um, and then let all, of the, the, uh, let all the vapor condense and all of the liquid run back into the pot. And then we just ran it the next day just on the pot. And um, it, basically what that means is that it, it was getting less refined. Uh, but the nice thing is we have really only had um, pretty much all good alcohol at that point. So we didn't need to refine it as much. And when we ran it the next day, we were just getting all of this beautiful hop character, um, floral notes and, and spiciness, and then, and then some of just the natural bitterness of it on the back end as well. So, um, so we ended up with a nice combination. We actually made test batches of Malort on the fly as we were distilling and uh, to try to get a feel of where we were going with it. And um, I guess that, that, you know, the reason we decided to make Malort out of it is because uh, we figured the hops would be a little bit bitter and, you know, wasn't like deep thinking, you yeah. know, oh, bitter, Malort, okay, let's do that. So, um, yeah, and then the, then the next batch we actually ran um, on the column all the way because we found that the intensity of the distillate of the hop flavor and character in the distillate from the pot run was plenty, and that would stretch out over um, the the whole batch. So yeah, so we ended up with this like multi-sweet um, stuff, and then this you know the two sections of hoppy, real floral, aromatic, and then and then just kind of deep bitter. Um, that's I mean it's it's I was smelling it and tasting it and. Uh, it's crazy that you can actually, like, you can extract that it's Malort, and I can definitely taste the anti-hero in it, which is pretty fascinating to me, really. Um, if anyone has had it, I see that some people have it, please let us know what you think of it. I'm curious. Um, but it's definitely that beer and a shot in one, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, right? Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> Someone had asked, uh, I, Tremaine, I was thinking, oh, anti-hero, the hops, the bitterness would go perfectly with Malort. It's just, someone asked, why not Rev Pills? Um, and obviously it's because Josh explained we, they had the most uh, um, anti-hero. Um, that's the beer they had. But it certainly makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm going to try to get to some um, of these comments or questions around here. Um, is the extra kick that it gets uh, due to the hops. I think so. It's it's so weird. Like <laughs> normally I don't sip Malort, but I kind of like sipping this one, but God, there's a lot going on there. Um, but when you shoot it, like it's got, it's, it, it's got a badass back end, like more, I think in a weird different way than regular Malort. And I think that's gotta be like basically the distilled hops. Josh, what are the different like compounds in the hops that, you know, some are floral, some are bitter? I think we're having trouble with Josh's mic. In the back? Can't hear you, Josh. Uh, um, yeah, several people in here have been talking about uh, the nose on this thing. It is quite uh, curious. Yeah. Um, it is a very confusing, like, it, it's just, it's, because it's like nothing we've had, it's just very confusing almost, right? Yeah. Uh, still figuring it, out the flavor profile, yeah. I mean, it's, um, I'm looking Very sweet, it. yeah, sweet on the nose. It, yeah. it, it, and this, this, this isn't very helpful, but it smells like a distilled beer on the nose, because there's a really distinct thing and, and it's almost it's kind of not like anything else um 
but it's one of my favorite. I, I absolutely love it about this because um, regular Millard, if you have one around, is uh, it doesn't have a it doesn't have a lot of notes. Yeah. Um, hey, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Josh. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, sorry for that, everybody. Um, <laughs> navigating like the technology pretty fucking well, I think, for like an afternoon four o'clock Memorial Day call. Thank you so much, Liz, for setting up a call. Cheers to everybody out there in Facebook and Zoom land. I'm drinking the regular right now. Mm -hmm. um, the regular definitely has more wormwood. Or we have covered up the wormwood and added like hot bitterness as a second kind of level of bitter flavor, right? And just like, um, here we go. So I opened my regular bottle and I said to my wife, Okay, yeah, I like to unmute myself. Hold on. No, you're good. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, can you hear me from here? Yep. All right, anyways, um, boom. I was like, why is there a cork in this bottle and a twist on this bottle? And it's because, like, I don't know, we had some Allure, but we lost the cork for this one. And so we, we got a cork from a bottle of uh, Carpano. Oh, nice. Uh, like uh, Carpano Antica is uh, a staple in our cocktail shelf. And uh, it is like multiple bitter herbs, let's just say, right? A fortified wine with multiple herbs. Am I, am I correct here? I think so. Anyways, we added like two levels of herbs, whereas like the original has one level. Like, don't get me wrong, there's like original shit that I don't know in Malort. I didn't, I wanted to like, I felt it was weird. I walked by and there was like a, a Google sheet printed out or like an Excel file of like the, 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 the recipe and stuff. And there were a bunch of hand scribbled notes from Tyrus, right? That's kind of what he does uh -huh. from what I got. That was kind of job. He like handled the early blends and um, yeah, man, I like to be there while Malort was like being made from our distillate. That was pretty fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't know. You guys think that this is going to be like the new Chicago handshake, given that the original Chicago handshake is actually mm. Wisconsin beer? I'm not trying to usurp old style, man. It's like we they have a they have the world's biggest six pack, or they used to. <laughs> That's true. Um, and uh, I think Paps is going to get into brewing. Will old style be made at the new Paps Brewery in California that they're buying from Miller? versus being made, in, or will it continue to be made in Wisconsin, along with all the other Miller products? I, I'm sure it'll continue to be made at, in Milwaukee. Um, I would assume that's where it's made today, I believe. You can correct, anyone can correct me, but I think Old Style is made uh, in uh, Milwaukee at the, on the, in the Valley, right? Um, um, I like- Oh, well, no, we're not trying to steal the handshake. No, no, definitely like anti-handshake fist bump. This bump, yeah, that's a good one, John. Someone else, someone beat me to the, someone beat me to the joke. Is that John Crothers? Is that John Crothers? I, I, that's what I was guessing. It's John. I see John. It yeah. says John, but yeah. you know, I bet it's him. Um. Okay. So you. It is. It is. Uh, it He's is. pretty good. He's pretty good. What's up, John? Hi, John. Here's um, John. Anti-hero Malort. You can get it at CH, and you can get it at Revolution. Yep. Finis. That's is it. it. Sold out. It. It sold out so. at CH yesterday. Okay, so you can't get it at CH. Can you get it at Revolution? I am not currently at the site, yeah, so I cannot verify. My, my online verification tools are, I, I believe it's sold out. Yeah, we sold most of it yesterday, and there was like a few, a couple, two, two or three cases at noon. It was the last report I got before I got lost in the woods at the beach. I would uh, <laughs> suggest checking Binnie's. Um, Binny. I, I think like you want to go to like a, a weird Binnie's, not like a super weird Binnie's, but like a medium weird Binnie's. Like I bet go to Bloomingdale, Illinois would be my guess. Uh, and as, my they, guess. as they used to or say. Or Downers Grove. I think Downers Grove is like a, a good Binnie's to aim for. If I was to pick a Binnie's to look for this, I'd, I'd go to Downers Grove. As they used to say, phone first, everybody. Yeah. Find out if they have. Um, okay, so if it's sold out at CH, if it's sold out at Rev, if it may be sold out at Binnie's, are you guys going to make this again, or is it a one-time thing? 
Oh man. Well, we've got more kegs. We have, we have, we actually, we have an, another 160 kegs um, at the distillery right now. And so um, we'll be getting, we'll be distilling those soon. But Josh and I, I don't know, we're talking about it. We're like, there, there's some other things we could do with it. Um, oh, a puppy. Yeah, puppy, pep it's Peppers, everybody. <laughs> peppers is tired, three hours in the dunes and stuff, and, dog, and a puppy. Yeah, we're, 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 you know, we're, we have so much more beer to come back at us. We actually just started last week to get like beer from our distributors. We hadn't even gotten beer back from our distributors. We told them just like, pause. Most of the beer distributors hadn't even gotten the beer back from the bars yet. Yeah. I don't expect till the end of July to get all the beer back from the bars. Huh. I think that's a good day actually, to kind of think good. about. Um, Paul actually just is asking a really good question. Did any Chicago bars get some of this? No. No, it's like they're all closed. Um, well, yeah, like, it's it, like a, a good Malort bar, like Nisei Lounge, right? Um, a good Malort bar, like those guys there. Yeah, that's a good Malort bar. There, there's, there's dive bars, there's old man bars, and there's Malort bars. <laughs> Liz, Liz, describe to us, question to Liz, um, how does a Malort bar differentiate between an old man bar or a dive bar? Um, I would, I, I'm not a big fan of uh, the term dive bar. Uh, it's a historic term from the late 1800s, but I feel that it was first coined um, um, around opioids and people uh, uh, doing a lot of opium at bars. Yeah, and, like an opium uh, den. Yeah, yeah, an opium den. And uh, to me, the term dive bar basically over time has just kind of resulted in a place where people who are less than go drink. Um, I think it's a good movie, like Once Upon a Time in America. Yeah, I think it's yeah. changed over time. But anyway, the difference between a dive bar to me and a good Malor bar. How about an old woman bar? A fine woman. line. It's a fine line. Um, I don't know. I just know that. Yeah, no, it's like so weird that the bars are closed when we're doing this, right? <laughs> That's like the, the irony, the weird irony of this. Right. Um, um, yeah, I just, I just always uh, refer to. Um, Nisei because they have uh, a lot of Valort stuff going on with that wall of Valort and yeah. uh, to me it would have been uh, like quen quenchers they do Earl like Earl at quenchers used to always like bring by Malort like you ever had a group at quenchers Earl would bring by Malort shots just like on the house bar a bar owner bringing Malort shots on the house is the greatest that's a good that's a good bartender good bar owner right yeah. um, um go ahead no, no, but like, I, I hope we'll be hanging out in bars, man. Let's talk about it. Who misses bars? I think we all miss bars. We all yeah. miss breweries. Yeah. All of Drinking that. at home is fine, but it's not uh, we're, we're, The good news is we're in with the cool rock clubs, like the Empty Bottle and others that are never going to reopen, or are going to be the last to reopen. Uh, but never. Be the last to reopen. And, um, like socialization is um, a major byproduct of in hero and Malort. Let's be proud of the nice socialization that we've had to date and, uh, and aspire to like someday that'll happen, right? Again, it'll happen differently for a while, but I don't know, like a shot. I, I, I only had a couple shots during like hibernation. I gotta yeah. say like, it's not like an everyday thing for me. The bar environment is where I, I asked Tremaine, I was like, what's going on, man? Your business must be really hurt, right? He said that people actually buy it at like liquor stores in the neighborhoods. The Lord, if people like buy it at the store, they don't just drink it at the bar, they buy it at the yeah. store. But That's John, a, you're saying your shot game thrives at the bars. Exactly, like, yeah. exactly. I missed it. Yeah, <laughs> makes sense. Makes sense. I that mean, it, sense. Josh, it, Josh we makes a good point, which is yeah. the, the socialization thing. I mean, we are, we're all so hard up and desperate for socialization that we're willing to do like this fucking thing. You know, like, I, not that this Dinner. is, a, I believe this is wonderful, but you, you know what I mean? It's like, we're, we're not gonna, we can't be stopped from hanging out with each other. Right. No, and I think that, you know, once we get back to it, it'll just be all the more uh, special, right? It's almost like you take, you take these things of walking into these places for granted. 
Which one is more minty? I, I don't I don't think that the new one is necessarily more minty. It's just minty in a different way. I think the new one has malt sweetness and the other one doesn't have malt sweetness. Let's talk about sugars, right? Yeah. Okay, so you got your Malort. It's generally like alcohol. Uh, I'm gonna give away that like there was some cane sugar being used while I was there, right? There's other sugars out there. I wasn't there for the final production. I was there for some taste tests. And we're a brewery, you know, we specialize in malt sugar, barley malt sugar. Take some like grain from a barley plant, let it germinate, let it malt, steep it, you know, warm it, kiln it, oh, dry it, sorry. Brew with it, mash it, louder it, boil it. And we get maltose. You don't get maltose just without doing that, all those things for the most part than I already said. So it's like a different kind of, it's a warming sugar. Whiskey, okay, whiskey has got a lot of corn, a lot of dextrose, you know, some rye whiskey starts to take it in one direction, but like barley in like America and the whiskeys that we drink around here are a little less dependent on barley. They're dependent on corn and they're dependent on wheat, dependent on rye. Barley is like, would you reach remain like, Number four? What did you say to me about oh, yeah. barley? You're like, barley is like, doesn't, it's not so good. Or like, it's not so good for a couple of years. You gotta put it in a barrel. Yeah, I mean, that's why you don't drink, like, you don't find young scotch. You know, scotch, yeah. it, it just takes forever. Give me that two-year-old for, scotch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's worse than Malort. You need to be like hardy in the mountains with like a long beard and like lots of smoke. That's you right now. Yeah, I had uh, edibles only, not smoke. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, it's, Indi uh, it's Indiana. It's illegal. Is there, yeah. what about a Malort beer? Malort, yeah. Sure. Okay, let's see. How do we like do that? Worm wormwood. Let's talk about the wormwood. Yeah, sorry. So Tremaine, so Tremaine, like you buy a, a label, a brand from the old lady. Let's pick up the story. Talk to Sam. Talk to the old lady. A lady wants to retire. You buy the brand. <laughs> And you want to make a nice liquor and you want to put in this herb called wormwood. I like the, the, the green fairy, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it'll uh, make you go wormwood. crazy. We don't got no beers with wormwood. What does it take to make a liquor with wormwood? Um, a stout heart. <laughs> it's the Malort talking. Sorry. Um, yeah, well, I think I... So some of you guys might have had the barrel aged Malort we did, which I don't know if it was a great idea or whatever, but we just did it because, you know, we could. But um, some of those kegs um, have gone to some of the breweries now as well, and they're barrel aging the beer in the Malort barrels, which were bourbon barrels or rum barrels. So that, so there will be, that will be sort of like a beer Malort. But what were you thinking, Liz? Like, so like, uh, like a Malort flavored beer? I don't know. I mean, I leave that up to, to you experts, but I'm looking at this bottle, right? The bottle I've looked at many, many times. And then when you go to that collar and you see that logo that I've seen many, many times, my, my brain instantly went to, well, well, what about this logo on a can? Uh, I don't know. I was just yeah. thinking outside the usual space. I, so I'll to you. It's there. There are so many beer and beer and spirits really do. They they belong together, um, like peas and corn. <laughs> I think. All right. I really. I think I'm getting kind of hammered. This is fun. <laughs> By the way, for those of you on here who have specific questions about Malort and about CH, um, Tremaine and I did a chat a couple of weeks ago, two or th three weeks ago, maybe the month ago. Shit, I don't remember anymore. Uh, oh. We're focused solely on Malort, on Barrel Age Malort, on their new bourbon, um, on their facility, on their history. Uh, we are going right. to be launching a Bruzeum YouTube channel very soon, and all of the virtual events that we have done will live uh, on our YouTube channel. How cool are we? I feel like we're uh, finally, uh, you know, getting with it. Um, all right. So uh, when we launch that, we'll announce it, and then you can see that chat with Tremaine to learn more about uh, the Barrel Age Malort and the bourbon and all that other stuff. Um, if anyone has any questions, please ask in the chat room now. Um, or unmute yourself and just ask. 
Uh, this is our virtual tap room, after all. So we want to yeah, hear. I'll, I'll let me answer some questions. Uh, let's look here. Paul. Paul has so many questions. I knew. I knew Paul would ask a bazillion questions. Um, does the Amari program and its evolution help with bringing Malort along? <laughs> Don't apologize, Paul. And you can also unmute yourself, Paul. And ask anybody questions, questions, comments, concerns. Concerned that that my bottle is going to be empty soon. <laughs> um, I like. I'm going to call out the nice mention for Lunar Brewing. I love Lunar Brewing. It's like the epitome of the. Oh. Old Land Bar, Dive Bar, like everybody in the neighborhood bar, and a craft brewery. It's a Where's the little brewing? Villa, Villa Park. Oh. And uh, it is like the best brewery in Illinois for like being real and for being like a bar, a real fucking bar and a brewery. Lunar Brewing, by far. Charlie is the fucking man. They used to make uh, the Golden Prairie there that I used to work at the Golden Prairie Brewery. Ted from Golden Prairie, he worked there before he worked at Argus on the way to kind of building up Golden Prairie. And that's like old time Chicago, like early craft breweries, 90s. Like um, uh, that's when I entered Chicago, right? So, hmm? you know, Luna Brewing, it's just like you go there on like on a Saturday night, everybody's mm -hmm. drinking like Bud Lights and Miller Lights and probably White Claws. And there's a band playing and there's like, they don't know there's like a brewery. And some people are having a beers from the brewery right there. It's like the neighborhood bar with a beautiful wooden bar. I don't know, man. It's like you cannot uh, exempt the role of the neighborhood bar. No, you the cannot. Chicago culture. So it's like a draft beer right now, everybody. Just like a shot, a shot of Malort, a draft beer is something that's like uh, on the endangered list, if you ask me. So I think we need to treat it like that. And uh, we need to treat it with respect, right? And we need to like support the bars and the people who work in the bars. I mean, we need to support the bars themselves, the businesses. When the bars reopen, like, um, you know, hey man, it's like, we're gonna have to treat the bars well. And, uh, you know, I think like behavior at bars, that's awesome. We're talking about behavior at bars, who cares? But you know, it's like, still, it's like, be grateful of what you have. You know, appreciate it, and I hope it will be there for like. Oh, buy a fucking bar. Someone on this damn Zoom should like <laughs> find an old man who wants to retire and buy a damn bar. It's a great calling. It <laughs> it, it, it it sucks up your whole life, but it's worthy. You'll meet people. Yeah, it's almost like someone saying, "Hey, go start a brewery and become <laughs> get really rich fast." No, 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 no. If the breweries are okay, the bars are in sh fucking. Sh Shit shape right now. Yeah. Na neighborhood bars are gonna die. I remember, man. Like, um, someone said to me the other day, "Old Man Daily." Yes. What was the last thing that that hurt neighborhood bars? It was Old Man Daily. Yeah. No. I, I don't want to like go too deep, but we're like on a bruise DM talk. Let's do it, man. It's like changing our neighborhoods and places. And back then, it was not about like trying to stop. I don't know. It was, it was it was about culture change. It wasn't about health and safety, but it was about uh, a vision of culture. And the mayor is now in charge of when bars and restaurants reopen, just like the governor is across the state. And um, at least it's not the fucking local alderman. You know, it's like, I hope to get like a week or two's notice before we have to, you know, consider opening the bar. I'd like two, three weeks, I think is, I'd like a plan that was a little more, a couple weeks out. And we might not reopen right when we're allowed to, you know. We don't have a big beer garden, like Metropolitan yeah, uh, and others. Metropolitan. I think, uh, I think we should close that beer garden, streets. That beer garden. Close, close the streets and just do all outdoor dining on all streets everywhere. Yeah. Fuck it, we don't need cars. Like New Orleans, New Orleans style. I'm down with, I'm down with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. like Mackinac Island here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm down with 18 year olds drinking too. Um, okay. Uh, do it anyway. You know, right? It's like, yeah. 
The average age in Vietnam was 19. No, 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 19. Um, I'm going to uh, relay this one last question before we wrap up. Um, we asked about Floyd's. Let's talk about Floyd's. Yeah, so what, what's your opinion on three Floyd's deciding not to reopen their brew pub? Yeah. So I, I am uh, actually, just to catch up everyone, it's like I'm living in Indiana, Northwest Indiana. And um, it depends on what county you're in. First, like Michigan City opened and then like Hammond, Munster opened, right? Because of the concentration of cases. And um, I haven't talked to Nick in a while. So Nick, uh, just like me at Revolution, it's like a lot of people are looking to us to make decisions about what to do with our business that uh, we haven't had to make in a long time. It reminds me of the days when we first opened. We staffed up a lot. The most essential worker at Revolution now is the HR manager. We were trying to figure out what to do with everybody and uh, keep everybody safe. And no one works harder than her at Revolution. And um, at Three Floyds, uh, so down the street for me is like the Shoreline Brewery, Sam. I haven't been yet. It's been about a week, week and a half. I could have gone. I haven't gone yet. They have a nice beer garden. I'm going to go visit the beer garden when the other is nice. I maybe go this week. Um, but for Floyd's, like, Floyd started as a production brewery. They didn't start as a brew pub. Like Revolution, we started as a brew pub. Floyd started as a production brewery. And their bars, the bars that they serve was was customer number one. And they went for a very long time without having any beer, even in bottles. And then they went for a while without having any beer in cans. And, uh, and, then, they, and then they had, they didn't have a, a brew pub for a while. They had, you know, Dark Lord releases at the old tap room in Hammond and then in Munster. And so the Floyd's brew pub is fucking tiny. Social distancing at, in that location where the way it is today I think maybe you could get like 16 people in it comfortably, <laughs> you know, the bar, how many people fit at the bar? So I'm worried about Revolution's brew pub and our, our like wood bar there, the bartenders that serve the wood bar. It's like not, I don't think the laws are going to allow bar service. I think bar service and draft beer, mm -hmm. like pour right in front of your face where you just get to drink it and go, thank you. I think that's uh, the, what the endangered species. So yeah. I think that's a driver of Three Floyds. And I think um, Nick's making the right decision for all his people. And, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and say like the plus $600 unemployment, it's a good deal to be on unemployment. It's a softer cushion for your employees who you can no longer employ. And that's the fucking truth, Ruth, because you know, I think that matters too. I'm just, that's it. That's so it. Now that's all I know. That's all I know right now. There's so many unknowns. <laughs> so I many. I want to like. Who wants to be like? Who wants to be Neil Armstrong and set the first foot on the moon? No, not free Floyd. Um, so many unknowns. Uh, but a few things we do know is that thanks to Holly on here, um, Lakeview Binnies still has some anti hero malort. Nice. Get some. Get it. Go get Cheers. it. Or it's gone. Um, it's kind of sweet. It's sweet. It is sweet. It's nice. It's good. I like Definitely. it a lot. Yeah, I, like, I, like I really sweet. like it. Like it's always interesting because like I, I mean, whenever we make something, um, you know, we're always tasting it, and you know, we've done a lot of different products, and we, but it, I never really understand what it tastes like until I drink it like a normal person, and this is like the first time I'm drinking it like a normal person. And I dig this shit. I just, I'm, I'm pouring myself another one. There we go. Cheers. Like, so Good night, Dolly. Good night, Tremaine. Uh, like, so are there <laughs> other, like, spirits, like New Holland, let's talk about other spirits on the market related to beer. Like, obviously, um, I've got a personal stake in this. We've got a whole bunch of beer. Just to be clear to everybody, like, we've got a whole bunch more beer that's coming now back from the distributors to the brewery. Okay. We are working with Tremaine to send some of that to CH, so we're distilling it in various ways, figure out what to do with it. 
mostly we're like thinking about the next project, right? It's like not making huge batches of this handy hair malort. Um, Tremaine, we haven't said it yet. What was it? Remember, like after it sat a long time and still all the sugars. It's that we haven't talked about. It's that lower ABV. Normally, when they run distill it through their still, it's at a much higher level of ABV. We're running in here. It's down here. So uh, the sugar has started to caramelize in the still. And I wasn't there for all the runs, but what did it remind you of? I, I think I I think we can make a really nice barrel aged spirit. Like I guess they, it's called beer schnapps, but um, I think it was just beer whiskey. So I think we could take some of that kind of burnt caramel, you know, burnt um, malt sugar distillate and put it in a barrel, and I think it'll be really tasty. So I I definitely want. I mean, we're definitely going to do that. Um, the Malort was kind of an obvious and a fun one. Um, but I, I actually think there's, I mean, the, the thing about distilling is that if you start with something good, you can end with something good. If you start with something shit, you're going to end with something shit. And we, and like a couple man. So, so delicious. So, um, yeah, I mean, we can, you know, I, I think we can just make something that you really haven't had before. And, um, so we're we're just going to keep going and see see what someone happens. Someone mentioned Old Tom. Oh, someone mentioned Old Tom, but it's like oh it's yeah, not, with the sweetness, yeah, good. Uh, but it's not dirty. It's not like dirty like an Old Tom. It's like the hearts. It is strong in the cleanliness and hearts department right now. We have like we have yeah. found a way to clean it up so that it, it's not like you gotta hide the the tails with spice, right? So yeah. um, it's weird. I didn't, I didn't think we were going to be in that position when we started. I thought it was going to be like, oh, too bitter. Oh my God, we're going to have to like work out. Every time I've had beer shop in like Germany at a bar in Munich, is like, oh, they're like, just have the apple schnapp, really. But like, first we'll have the beer schnapp, then we'll like, we'll go to the apple or the cherry because like, we're going to be here all night. Um, no, it's pleasant. I think the taste for bitterness, both Malort and Angiero have increased the palate and the taste for bitterness. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I think before, like, let's roll back. That is Sean Huffin. Let's go forward in the 1890s. Let's keep rolling the tape forward and forward and forward. Uh, uh, in the 1920s, oh my God, I'm like bathtub gin. Sure, I'll, I'll take whatever you got, you know? And then <laughs> get forward into the 40s, 50s and 60s. Like, please roll that shit back. Like 70s and 80s, let's just have light beer. And then, like, 90s and forward, uh, bitterness is like, whoo. And then yeah, we're once, going out, and now we're going back to the old loggers. Yeah, yeah everything, everything goes in circles, right? Well, back to the 19th century. Mm -hmm. um, all right, everybody, we're going to, we are at the 5 o'clock hour, which it's 5 o'clock somewhere here. <laughs> so you might as well start uh, or keep drinking. Um, I want to thank Josh and Tremaine for uh, taking time out of their weekends, out of their hikes, to uh, be with us today. Uh, I and wanted the hike to be over, but it was my fault. <laughs> the hike should have been over. We all make mistakes. You, we you, started at 10.45. You <laughs> misguided your family and ran out of water. It's okay. I'd like to recommend uh, Misguided Spirit. Uh, former RAV employee James Zinken who moved to New York City, has, has a new brand called Misguided Spirit. And his aim, Tremaine, he's cutting in on your business. Just so you know, you can watch what he's doing and follow him. His aim is to be the new well liquor, to make like cheap contract brand spirit, to be like the well liquor that you've heard of versus like the well liquor you've never heard of who owns. I, yeah, and it, um, it, as long as it's good, I applaud that. Exactly, and he's working with the, the makers you know, and maybe like you give him a call, Tremaine, maybe like contract some vodka from you guys because your vodka is fucking good and it's, it has a nice flavor. And um, the, the connection between beer and whiskey will go on. It will, all of us on this call, it will exceed our years. It's it will true. always be there. It's true. It's great. So let's, uh, let's, hey, I, I toast to that. Hey, everybody, a, a huge shout out to Liz for what you're doing for 
being awesome, for being smart and fun and getting people together. And that's just beautiful. Thank you so much, Liz. Well, thanks for your support and thanks for uh, doing what you're doing. Uh, same to Josh. You guys are important parts of not just Chicago, but the region, the nation, the world. Um, and and to the world. as we say at the Bruseum is that uh, all of these things are more than just beverages, right? They are powerful cultural forces that make the world turn and bring people together. All these people here who have been sitting with us for the last hour. Um, so thanks to everyone who has been here. Um, again, we've been doing this twice a week, sometimes three times a week since March. Our next chat is uh, Tuesday. Tuesday, I am having a conversation with the Smithsonian's beer historian, Teresa McCullough. Um, she and I are going to talk about a few things in beer history, uh, um, not just um, from old stuff, but more modern craft beer history, too. So. Um, we will keep going. Check our website for more information, chicagobruseum.org. And everyone have a safe, happy, hoppy, uh, and properly bitter Memorial Day weekend, holiday weekend. Thank you, everyone, for taking some time to hang out with us. Yeah. There you go. There you go.